It's time for Recipe of the Day. Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and I don't really have much of a sweet tooth, so instead of doing some kind of chocolatey thing, I had it in my head that I would do one of my favorite French restaurant foods, steak tartare. But then when I was doing the research, it turns out that it might not actually be French, even though it's very popular in France, but I've already decided that I'm talking about it, and so we are doing this. So yes, it seems that it was actually introduced throughout Europe in the 17th century by Russian ships, and it possibly came from Mongolia. Mongolia, which is why it's called tartare. But in the 20th century in France, it was actually known as steak à l'américaine. So it was like American steak. Anyhow, whatever you want to call it, steak tartare is what I'm going with. It is raw beef that's chopped up finely and then mixed with other ingredients to just be extra flavorful. There's usually a little bit of raw egg in there, uh, sometimes some Worcester sauce, capers, pepper, seasonings. I'm going to say that if you are not somebody who likes eating raw things, this is not for you for sure. If you are immunocompromised in any way or if like you're pregnant or any kind of risk factors that might make this not suitable for you, do not make it. Do not taste it. It's not, it's not, it's not worth it. I mean, it's delicious, but it's not worth your health. So just take into account your own personal restrictions if you're thinking about making this. Now, if you are going to make this, you do still have to take some precautions. So what you're going to be looking for is some beef tenderloin that's like filet mignon, and you want about four ounces to serve two to four people as an appetizer. You can, of course, do more than that. If you are at the grocery store and the filet mignon is packaged in like packs of two or four, you can always ask the butcher meat counter to just give you one of them. That is something that works. Now you want to buy the freshest meat possible. So you want to talk to your butcher or you want to look for really late sell-by dates, like really far into the future. Those are good things to do, talking to somebody, checking those dates. You absolutely do not want to use ground beef because that has too much surface area. Each little ground of it has surface area and that's why you always need to cook ground beef really, really well. And so you don't use ground beef. You want to use the filet mignon, you want to use the steak. And if you are a little bit concerned, there is some something that you can do. And that is when you get it home, refrigerate it right away, for sure, refrigerate it right away, no matter what. And then you want to take a sharp knife and just trim off the outside edges before you start making this. And that just takes away the places that are most likely to have bacteria. You don't have to do that step, especially if you know the meat is fresh and you're doing this right on the day that you got it and it went straight into the fridge, like all of that. But it is just an extra precaution that you can take. Okay, so now we're ready to make the steak tartare. So it's been in the fridge the whole time. You're going to take it out of the fridge. I should say that some people actually like to freeze the beef a little bit before cooking it to make it easier to slice thinly. And I do recommend that for beef carpaccio where you're trying to make those like almost see-through thin slices, but it's not necessary for the steak tartare and I don't do it. So I'm coming straight out of the fridge with that. And then what I'm doing is using my sharpest knife to cut the thinnest slices of beef that I can. Just cut that all into slices and then take each slice one at a time and cut it into the thinnest strips you can. You're just trying to get really nice and thin. Then gather up those strips and then you chop those into nice thin little bits, nice small little pieces. And I'm going to link to this post. It has a very good step-by-step tutorial and it actually shows you on a cutting board starting with the full steak and then what the slices should look like, what the strips should look like, and then what those little pieces should look like so that you have a good idea of what you're trying to do. Now often steak tartare is served with like a raw egg egg yolk on top as part of the presentation, but I like to mix all the ingredients that are going to go into the steak tartare together before serving it, and I find that that lets it get more evenly mixed throughout, and it lessens the possibility that we're going to be like bruising or mushing the meat as we're stirring it together, like at the table, and also over mixing ground meat or chopped meat like this can make it tough, so I want to have all the control over all the mixing before it gets served, so that's what I'm trying to do. So what I do for the four ounce beef tenderloin is to mix together half of an egg yolk, that's a raw egg yolk, with a tablespoon of olive oil, a quarter teaspoon of sherry vinegar, a quarter teaspoon of salt, and eighth of a teaspoon of ground black pepper, coarsely ground black pepper. Now whisk that all together to make it smooth. And then you're also adding in a half teaspoon of dry mustard powder, two tablespoons of capers that you've drained and then roughly chopped, and two tablespoons of chopped shallot. You can instead use finely minced red onion or a clove of garlic in there. That'll work as well if you wanted. So that's finely minced garlic, shallot, or red onion. I mix 
all that together. And once it's all mixed together, then I add it into a bowl with the chopped beef. And now again, we don't want to over mix this. So what I like to do is to use a fork and I'm kind of fluffing it together, just turning it in about eight times just to make sure that that mixture is really thoroughly mixed through, but not over mixed. Now it's time to plate it. My favorite thing to do is to get a cookie cutter. You want about a three to four inch diameter cookie cutter and you put that on the serving plate and then you just transfer that chopped up steak mixture into there, press down a little bit on the top and then lift up the cookie cutter. If you don't have a cookie cutter, you can use a ramekin, grease it on the inside and on the bottom, then pile the steak into there and then put a plate on top of it and then invert so that you end up with that steak kind of falling in that nice pattern. If you don't want to be fancy, this is fine. Just served in a nice little bowl or piled onto plate. You just want some nice like toast or crackers, something really good to serve it on. And I do love to garnish it with some fresh parsley and some lemon zest. The lemon zest really makes a difference here. Don't skip it unless you really, really don't want it for some reason, but it really makes a difference. I really like that brightness and the parsley too, and flat leaf parsley, not curly parsley. And then just your toast points. I wouldn't butter them because this is very rich and then you're good to go. That is steak tartare to inspire your Valentine's Day menu for tomorrow. I will put the link in the show notes for this podcast episode, or you can head to cookthestory.com slash ROTD and get it there, or you you can get it in our Facebook group. I post the link to the recipe of the day recipe every single morning. So you can always find what I'm talking about there and get to the podcast from there. Comment, leave pictures of anything you make. I cannot wait to see you in there. The group is at facebook.com slash groups slash recipe OTD. I'm Christine Pittman from cookthestory.com, thecookful.com, the all new chicken cookbook. And from this podcast recipe of the day, I hope you have a great day. Let's get cooking. Let's get cooking.